Hi guys. Good evening. How are you? Hi Nicolas. Hi David. Hi Huram. Well guys, we wait five minutes and only you. Only you are in the class. So I'm gonna start. Um I don't know. Maybe the class is gonna be so short because there are only four of us. So I don't know. I want to start with Nicolas. Okay. Okay, Nicolas. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. What did you do this last weekend? Mm, I this I visit I visited my grandmother. Um, I worked. I work. Uh, all the Saturday, all Saturday, and I played soccer uh, Sunday, and uh, I went to the mall with my my mother and my brother, and I ate Chinese food. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna write the verbs I use. Use the verb go, visit, play, eat, and what else? Uh, work. Work, okay. Later in the class, we are gonna see. Um, yes, you use it correctly because it was in simple past. But maybe some people here in the class, maybe. And they don't know about simple pass. So later in the class, you're gonna see how to make it in simple pass. Okay, thank you, Nicolas. Very good job. Okay, congrats. Let me see David Garay. In my case, uh, I, I, in my weekend, in the last weekend, uh, I I work in the job. I practice uh, a little exercise. Um, I I learn learn it English. Um, I make it. Uh, a lunch for for my job for my job see yes mm -hmm. yes okay um solamente. only that okay perfect very good no. job david Garay. excellent thank you let's see um albino hernandez okay uh, in the Saturday, I woke up early morning because I went I went shopping to the supermarket with my sister, and we cooked the lunch, and we prepared chicken soup. Also, in the afternoon, I roamed around the park. You walk around the park. Yes. Oh, okay, walk. Okay, excellent. Only that. Yes. Okay, good job also. Thank you. And the last person is going to be Horam. Okay? Horam? Are you there? Can you hear me, guys, or not? Yes, yes. sure. I can hear you. Okay, thank you, Nicolas. Yes, maybe Horam right now is busy, okay? So I'm gonna omit that. Okay, guys, very good job. I think that everybody in the class has used a simple pass, okay? If I, yes, because sometimes the pronunciation is a little confused. Sometimes it sounds like only in simple present, okay? Especially with um regular verbs, okay? For example, like, uh, walked, prepared, cooked, um, uh -huh, worked. 
ajá, que son verbos que la pronunciación a veces no se distingue mucho, pero estoy casi 100% seguro de que Albino, David y Nicolás utilizaron el simple present, el simple past, sorry. So, very good job, guys. And this class is about that, simple past. And something else is an used to, okay? Used to is uh, like a phrase, like a uh, idiom, like a uh, expression, is better like that uh, expression that people use in English, okay? It's very important too. But first of all, we are gonna see simple past, okay? And Alvino, can you read the explanation, please? The title and explanation, please. Okay, simple past, the actions, is finished in the past. The simple past is a verb tense that I that is used to talk about things that happened or existed before now. Okay, excellent. So simple past is an action that ended or is over, completely over, okay? Cuando una acción está completamente terminada en tiempo pasado. Like what? Remember that we talk about what did you do this what, last weekend. We are talking about the last Sunday and the last Saturday. So that actions are completely finished. Esas acciones ya pasaron, ya esas acciones las hicieron, trabajaron, eh, hicieron algunos ejercicios de inglés, aprendieron, hicieron, visitaron, jugaron. Entonces, son acciones que se quedaron en el pasado, ¿ok? That is the use of simple past. Simple, simple past, sorry. Very simple, okay? And the structure is very simple too. Why? Because we only have subject plus the verb in simple past plus a complement. In this case, in different with another tenses in English, we don't have a difference with the subjects. What I want to say with this, what I want to mean, that I don't know if you remember, but for example, in simple present, um, it changed. For example, and um, she sings, but I sing. And or for example, he watches, but I watch or you watch. And what else? Um, I don't know, for example, um, let me see. For example, dances. She dances, but I dance, and you dance, and we dance, and they dance, okay? But for example, Shakira dances, okay? So in simple present, I don't know if you remember, but sometimes it's a little complicated, complicating, because <clears throat> cambia, según el sujeto va cambiando la forma del verbo. Gracias a Dios, el simple past is very simple for that. Because in simple, in simple past, we use always the same form of the verb in simple past, only that, okay? So that is very important. That's why this um, English tense is not so complicated, okay? Have you questions about this at this point of the class? No, Okay, thank you, Nicolas. Very good job. Nicolas, can you read from one to four examples, please? She sang a Bad Bunny song in the last party, and he took, he took my pencil. I walked to my work, and they talked about the homework. homework yeah, excellent. Um, David, the last examples, the last three examples, please. We studied present perfect last week. Last. Sorry, last, last weekend. Last, last week. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Anna went to to the beach last weekend. Jose and Maria saw a romantic movie last night. Okay, excellent. Okay, as you can see, the verb is not going to change for the subject. We have examples with him. And for example, if I want to say you, you took, I'm sorry, pencil, you took my pencil, okay? For example, also, I walked to my work. 
I can say it. she walked too much to her work, okay? So now as you can see, the verb is not gonna change for the subject, okay? It's only in simple past. And I have this list of of um, verbs in simple past, okay? And let me see, well, in this class, we have a lot of information for simple past. Actually, I have in the program that this is a review of simple past. I don't know if guys, well, and David, Nicolás, and, and Alvino, if you have already seen these terms in the past. Uh, uh, this this topics mm -hmm. what simple pass yeah in last classes before yes. and the uh, intermediate yes. pre intermediate intermediate tree I excellent those are perhaps so simple pass okay in the chat les voy a dejar la lista de verbos para que si ahorita Pueden revisarla porque obviamente tengo muchas preguntas en, en, en Simple Past. And it's better that you have the tools to look for that word. Why? Because, como les menciono en esta clase, es mucha información. Entonces no les puedo poner porque hay unas reglas. Para los verbos regulares hay algunas reglas. Yo creo que en esta otra clase lo tengo. Por si, no sé, no... No, ¿cómo se llama? ¿No recuerdan alguna o algo quieran recordarlo? Yo les digo, no lo puse en esta clase porque esta clase está un, para mi gusto un poquito saturada de información. Entonces, déjenme compartirles también este link. Les digo, en caso tengan eh, preguntas acerca de algunas reglas del... Se llaman spelling rules. Spelling. Spelling. Rules in simple past, right? Simple past, yeah. okay. So in the chat, you have a list of verbs in simple past. In that list, you have um, irregular verbs and regular verbs. Regular are very simple, okay? That is the easier to do in simple past. But what is difficult? It's difficult when we use, for example, irregular verbs. For example, C is a regular verb because the simple past of C is, is not only at D at the end. It, the past is so, okay? Okay, pero por eso les comparto la lista de verbos y también unas spelling rules in simple past, okay? Por si tienen dudas acerca de eso, puedan consultar a los links. ¿Tienen una duda hasta este momento, chicos? So, um, while I'm preparing all this slide, I want that you respond to this question, okay? I'm going to start with Joram. Are you there or not? No, I don't think so. Maybe he, he is really busy. So, I want that David Karai answer. Okay, David. What did you do this morning? In this morning, I woke up at say, 6 a.m. I, I prepared my breakfast. I, I ate at um, my breakfast, um, I I got to the I got to the work. E only that. Okay, spring rules regular for. Okay, excellent, David. I only one thing about the last tense of eat. Okay, I'm gonna write these examples here in the slide. 
Okay, for example, we have it in simple present, but the pass of it is eight. Okay, repeat it. Eight. Eight, excellent. This is an irregular, irregular. Okay, this is an irregular verb. And yes, yeah, sometimes the pronunciation, it could be uh, confusing. That is, when you know it, it's really easy after that. And also prepared, okay? You say it, prepare. I'm sorry, prepare. And we have prepared. Okay, pre, prepared. Okay, then. like with a T at the end, prepared, prepared. Okay, yes. No, it's more like B. Okay, prepared. The, prepared. Repeat it, David. Prepared. Excellent. Nicolas? Yes, sir. Repeat it. Prepared. 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 Like with the at the end? Prepared. Prepared. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Um, Albino? Prepared. Excellent. Very good. Okay. And also, David Garay, he used a uh, go. Okay. The past form of go is went. Okay. Remember, went. This is also an irregular verb. Go, went. Okay. Para los verbos irregulares, chicos, por si se preguntan, no sé, tal vez tuvieron esa pregunta cuando vieron este tema, pero por los irregulares no, no, no tenemos reglas. Okay. Solo para los regulares. Así de que no hay como una forma de de cómo saber. Ah, esto va a ser, ok. Um, let me see. Ah, yes. When we were talking about what did you lose, what did you do this last weekend? Yes. As I told you, I think that you used um, simple past and that is very important. For example, um, David, what is the past form of work? Work it. Work. work. Worked. Work. With D, D at the end. Work. Excellent. What is the past form of do? If you don't know it, it's okay. Did. I, mean, I don't know, teacher. Did. Excellent. Did. Another regular verb. Um, the learn. Mm, learn. Excellent. Okay, good job. And the make? Make. The make? Uh, make? Made. No. Ah, made. Made. Uh -huh. ¿Han visto, chicos, cuando... Bueno, ajá, en ese caso... Bueno, pero por lo menos la ropa, las etiquetas, ven que dicen made in China, for example, or made in Thailand, or made in Honduras, okay? That is a good example of the use of simple past. Why? Because that cloth, it was made, made in the past, okay? That clothes uh -huh, were made in the past, okay? So that is very important. It's a good example. You can look in your um, etiqueta and you can see that, okay? Made, made, past of make, made, okay? Y es lo que les digo, chicos, vaya, creo que David me estaba diciendo como make, make. Pero lastimosamente, pues, es un verbo eh, irregular. Por eso es importante a veces como, por eso les compartí la lista de verbos, porque hay unos verbos que uno puede pensar, ah, por la forma es eh, regular, pero no es así. Entonces, por eso es importante como a veces poner en práctica eh, los verbos en simple pass, ok, más allá de solo leerlos, sino de también ponerlos en práctica, probablemente ustedes en la plataforma tengan más ejercicios acerca de eso, así que, Nicolás, um, these are easy, but for example, the pass of it is eight, eight, excellent, ok, um, with this one, ok, for example, what Wake up. Is walk woke up. Excellent. Wake up. Of cook. Is cooked. 
accent, good pronunciation. Um, <laughs> we have prepared and walked. Uh, prepared and walked. Walked. Excellent. Very good job. I don't know, guys, do you have questions about the structure? Do you have questions about something at this point? No. No, okay, perfect. I think that this question uh, was answered only by, only by David. So, Alvino, what did you do this morning? Okay, this morning I woke up early morning because I went to work and at 5.30 a.m. I took a shower and I had breakfast and then I brushed my teeth and, and then um, I went to work. I, I rode my motorcycle, that's all. Okay, road. Okay, road. Um, yes, really good. Okay, you know the simple pass of that verbs and that is excellent. Okay, very good job. And the last one is gonna be Nicolas. Okay, Nicolas, what did you do this morning? Um, I drank. I drank coffee. Um, excellent. I. I taken taken a shower oh. I, I took yeah. I took a shower took, yes I took a shower and took uh, took a shower I, I took a shower I programmed I programmed a, a software for the company okay and I checked a lot of emails and I talk with another partners. I I I talk with another co-work. Co-workers. Um. Only that. Only that. Okay. Issue. Perfect. Repeat it. Co-workers. Co co-workers. Excellent. Co-workers. Okay. Co okay. Uh -huh. Co-workers. Very easy. Compañeros de trabajo. Okay. Compañeros de trabajo, de oficina, no sé, ahí como ustedes quieran. Okay, this a new word, maybe, and, ajá. Chicos, de verdad, les recomendaría, solo por cuestiones de, de, de recordar, visiten el link de las spelling rules for regular verbs in English, and also to check out the list of verbs in simple past. Okay, only to remember. Okay, because with practice, you can improve your English fluency and also your grammar, okay? So only that is um, a tip, okay, to remember. And let me see. Ah, yes, also, guys, you have this form in the platform, okay? We have the simple pass of the verb to be, okay? But I want that in class help me reading this explanation, please. Okay, the past form of the verb to be, we use it when we want to talk about how we were in the past, how we felt about something, moods, etc. Okay, excellent. Okay, in this case, chicos, no voy a explicar en español porque siento que es un poquito complicado. Les puse aquí how we felt about something, moods, se refiere también como a los estados de ánimo que podemos llegar a tener, entre otras cosas. ¿Por qué? Porque, por ejemplo, pueden ser estados físicos, eh, estados emocionales, emociones, eh, como características, eh, sí, tanto físicas como intangibles, pues. For example, um, I was sad some minutes ago. Okay, we are talking about that I feel sad some minutes ago. Okay, or also she was tired before the class. Okay, this is a state of feelings. Okay, 
Uh -huh. Because I'm saying that Jess was tired. Okay. We were excited to see the new topic. Okay. How I feel um, in the past. In the past. Okay. And they were angry with their mom. Okay. But in this case, with the simple past, the simple past form of verb to be, yes. Sadly, in this case, we have a different way to use it. Why? Because for he, she, it, and third person, we are going to use, use was, okay, was, plus the complement, okay, the complement, it will be a feeling, a state of something, a mood, okay, and also for I, we, they, and the first and the second person and plural pronouns, we have where, okay, where. So, uh -huh, where plus a complement. Okay, that is the only difference that we have and it's very important to remember. At this point, guys, with it was and where, do you have questions? No. no. Okay, then. Okay, just let me also, obviously, tomorrow, um, tomorrow in the morning, I'm gonna share the, the, the presentation, but I want to share you at this moment, a list of some feelings in English with the translation, okay, in Spanish. I'm gonna share this link already in the, in the chat because I want that you tell me how did you feel before the class, okay? So I don't know, guys, do you want some minutes to see the, the list or do you feel prepared to start answering this question? Uh, I have a list here, but I try. Okay, perfect, so go ahead, tell me. How did you feel before the class? I felt I felt very tired. And no, no, no. I I was I That's was felt right? I was no I was I was very tired because ah, you I want have... to say it, sorry, sorry, but you want to say it exhausted, right? Exhaust. Okay. Uh -huh. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I was I was very ex exhausted. Exhausted. Excellent. Exhausted. Um, and a little bit. Uh, how do you say? Uh, I and a little bit excited because I want to learn English. Oh. Yes, but repeat that 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 last sentence, please. And a little bit, a little no, bit. No, but right? from the beginning of that sentence, I I was excellent exa right. exhausted. Uh huh. Uh, and and all and also. Uh, also, yes. And also, I. Uh, a little bit excited because I want to I want to learn English. Okay. So in that case, maybe no, maybe not. It's better to use, for example, I was exa exhausted before the class, but also I was. Okay. I was a little bit excited for that class because I want to learn. Okay. Okay, I was. Repeat okay. it now. Uh, all the all the sentences. Yes, from the beginning, all that you tell me about with the corrections. Okay, I I was very exhausted, but also, but also I was a, I was excited because I want to learn English. Excellent. Now it's better. Okay, very good job, Nicolas. Okay, thank you. Okay, now David Garay. Okay, how did you feel? No, first of all, David, how was 
he before the class? How was Nicolas before the class? Nicolás, eh, Nicolás was very exhausted. Eh, a little tired. Uh, no, I don't remember. Okay, but yes, if you want to change a little bit, it's okay, but what is very important. Estoy viendo que ustedes me dicen mucho como solo así. So, um, por ejemplo, um, Nicolás was very exhausted before the class. And also very excited. Ok. La gente le va a entender, obviamente. Pero gramaticalmente preferiría, chicos, porque pues, obviamente estamos aprendiendo inglés por algo, es que mejor utilicen siempre sujeto en las oraciones. Ok. For example, the right way it could be, it will be, and also he was and also also he was very excited okay see it i use the subject was and the complement okay but i always use the structure okay for the first sentence and for the second sentence porque después de and tenemos otra oración entonces como es otra oración Necesitamos utilizar la estructura, ¿ok? ¿Me entendieron, chicos? Sí, quizás allí como yes. nosotros en el español, ¿verdad? Estamos acostumbrados a como a unir esa misma oración, ¿verdad? Pero como usted sí. dice, gramaticalmente es necesario, ¿verdad? Colocar nuevamente el, el sujeto y ya lo, el verbo de nuevo. Es simplemente también para que no se vayan a como acostumbrar a después no utilizar pues la gramática porque les digo o sea al fin de todo según yo tengo entendido el curso es para que ustedes puedan expresarse en inglés y pues obviamente eso se logra pero también pues como maestro uno quiere de que ustedes pues aprendan las cosas como como son pues correctamente entonces por eso les digo obviamente las personas por ejemplo si hablan no sé con un gringo con con un inglés o con una persona que tenga como inglés, la, el, la, la, el inglés como lengua materna, les va a entender. Tampoco les va a decir, uh, no, pero esa oración está mal, mal usada. Sino es que simplemente pues le van a entender, pero pues obviamente ustedes pueden demostrar que han aprendido inglés, que han tenido un buen teacher, o que lo trate, que intente, que les está ayudando. Entonces, ajá, ¿verdad? Solo eso, chicos. Traten Thank siempre you, de utilizar la, la estructura, ¿verdad? Um, let me see. I think that the last person is gonna be Alvin. Okay. Alvin, no? Sorry. And before the class, I was busy because I cleaned off my room and I was sleepy because his day was tired. I was very busy because I cleaned. I'm sorry, I cleaned my room. Sorry, I cleaned up my room. Cleaned up my room. Uh huh. What else? And I was sleepy. I was sleepy. I was sleepy. Okay. Uh -huh. Sorry, Arvina, continue. Because your day, your day was tired. Tiring. Um, in, you want to say that this day? Tired. Was... 
¿Tú quieres decir que este día fue eh, cansado? Ajá, no se puede decir tired. Fíjate que esto hace poco creo que lo enseñé en, pre -intermedio, en intermedio todo, si no me equivoco. Y no. Es ahorita, quiero ver, son... Ay, se me ha ido. Pero esto es un gerundio. Nosotros tenemos, por ejemplo, tenemos tired y tiring. Ok, tired is how you feel. Ok, I'm a person, obviously I can feel tired. Ok, also in some cases an animal will feel tired. Ok, that is ok. Pero cuando, por ejemplo, utilizamos tired, exhausted, um, um, adjetivos como estos, son, si ven, siempre terminan en ed. Es porque es una emoción, cómo uno se siente. Pero si queremos decir cómo nos hace sentir una cosa a nosotros, no podemos decir, this day was tired. Tenemos que decir, this day was tiring. Because it makes me feel tired. Okay? It's not the same. For example, I'm going to give you... I hope that, espero no estarlos confundiendo, pero solo, por ejemplo, para que más o menos vayan viendo, creo que, ah, ustedes son intermedio uno, en el otro lo van a ver, pero ahorita solo para aclararte lo que tú me dices de que, tiring o tiring, o tired. Por ejemplo, I am bored. I am boring. Guys, don't worry if you don't know the, the answer, but tell me, do you think that this Is the same thing, I'm bored and I'm boring? What do you think? Eh, born es nacer, ¿verdad? No, bored, for example, this class is so bored. In this class, I am so sleepy. The teacher talk a lot. They don't, get, they don't play games, for example. I'm mm, so aburrido. Mm -hmm. Aburrido. So, do you think that is the same to say that I'm bored and I'm boring? Eh, I'm boring quiere decir que es como, digamos, la clase me aburre. Estoy aburrido por algo. No. Va. Siempre le digo, apliquemos la misma. Cuando termina, por ejemplo, en ED, quiere decir de que es como yo me siento. Como yo me siento. Por lo general, obviamente, son cosas vivas que pueden sentir. Por ejemplo, le digo un animal, una persona. Pero también uno puede ser aburrido. ¿En qué sentido? Por ejemplo, quizás mis alumnos pueden pensar que yo soy aburrido. The teacher is boring. O mi hermana puede pensar que yo soy aburrido. My sister thinks that I am boring. ¿Ok? En esta, I am boring, estoy diciendo de que yo hago sentir a la gente así. Que yo soy aburrido pero no de que yo estoy aburrido, sino de que yo soy aburrido para las personas, por ejemplo, quizás para las personas que me conocen, para las personas que me rodean, pero si digo que es, I'm bored, es como decir I'm tired, que ¿Okay? es how I feel, ¿ok? Por eso, Albino, no usamos this day was tired. That's why we use tiring, because it's how this day made me feel. Okay. Es como este día me hizo sentir. Entonces, como un día no puede sentir, obviamente, porque el día es una cosa intangible, una cosa que, que está por, por estar. Entonces, obviamente, eso no puede sentir, pero sí te puede hacer sentir aburrido, emocionado, aterrorizado. Entonces, para esos casos utilizamos eh, terminaciones en ING. For example, tiring. Okay. This day was tiring. Entendieron un poquito, chicos. Les digo, este tema lo van a ver en, en intermedio 2. Así que no se preocupen, pero ajá, quería dar como la aclaración de por qué es tiring y no tired. Yes, teacher, okay, gracias. Thank you. What did you say, Alvina? Alvina? Hola. No, nada. Thank you. Ah, ok. And guys, I want to take this example because also Albino always use the structures, okay? 
He told me first of all, I was very busy. This is one sentence. We, we, we have because, and after because, we start with a second sentence. Because I clean up my room. Also, after that, he used the same structure. I was sleepy because this day was tiring. Okay, entonces como siempre ven, siempre va sujeto, was aware, and the complement. Okay, siempre chicos, siempre traten de utilizar la, 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 la estructura. Okay, and do you have questions, guys? Something that you want to ask, that you want to know? Yes, no? No, okay, perfect. Thank you, Albina. And the last Almost the last part of this class is questions and negative form of the simple past. Okay. And question, we almost always have the, the same structure. We have WH um, word, for example, where, when, why, what, plus did. Okay. Always did in this case is an auxiliary. Okay, is not a verb. Okay, si quieren preguntar algo en pasado, tienen que decir, tienen que iniciar con esta estructura, con la WH word, como les mencioné, why, when, where, what, and after that, did. Okay, did no es un verbo en este caso, no es un verbo, no van a decir, ah, no, pero es que ahí estoy usando dos verbos, no es un verbo, es un auxiliar. Y solo como recordatorio, Los auxiliares en inglés nos dicen en qué tiempo estamos preguntando algo. Por ejemplo, el auxiliar para preguntar cosas en simple present is do or does. Did you remember that? For example, where do you live? Where does she live? Okay. And the auxiliary let us know the tense of the question. Okay. Y siempre en el simple past, eso no va a cambiar. Como les menciono, en el simple present, for, ex for example, yes, it changed because we have do and does. In this case, we have a did for she, for he, for it, for I, for you, for we, and for they. For third person, for second person, and for um, first, second, and third person, we always, we are, we are always, we are not used and did. Always, 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 always. And also this sometimes is a little confusing. So be careful with this, okay? Because, me voy a explicar así. Porque, como les digo, el auxiliar ya nos menciona en qué tiempo está la pregunta. Entonces, como el auxiliar did, ya me está diciendo que la pregunta está en simple past, ya no necesito utilizar el verbo en simple past too. Ok, simplemente digo, for example, where did you study? Where did you study? Ok, as you can see, I have the WH word, the auxiliary did, the subject you, and the verb in base form, study. Ok, no study it. Ok, if you say, for example, where did you study it? This is going to be wrong. Ok. Nicolás, why would, um, is this correct? No, teacher. Why? Because the verb is in past. And because we also have the auxiliary that let us know that is in simple past. So it's not necessary to use the verb also in simple past. Very good, Nicolás. Um, correct. Okay, eso está incorrecto. Uh -huh. For example, David Caray. David? Yes, teacher. When did you... What? It's okay? This question is okay? It's incorrect. Why? For, for use... Uh, auxiliary did it's not necessary bear in pass. Excellent. Really good explanation, David. You have already understood this topic. 
okay and yes so this is very simple and uh -huh, we have for example wh questions but also we have yes or no questions okay yes no questions we have for example did plus the subject plus always the verb in base form para preguntar chicos únicamente para preguntar como siempre utilizamos el auxiliar para preguntar siempre ocupamos el verb in base form pero cuando estamos hablando en una oración normal ahí sí es importante recordar los verbos regulares e irregulares en su tiempo pasado por eso les compartí la lista ok for example to ask I'm gonna use this structure but to answer I'm gonna use this structure this this or this ok it depends the context um, uh -huh. Ah, yes, the yes or no questions. Okay, we have this, did, plus the subject, plus the verb in base form, plus obviously the complement. Okay, for example, I'm going to use this, this, this answer. Alvino, if I'm saying, si estoy diciendo, she didn't dance in the last party, if I want to ask a yes or no question, how it could be? Uh, no, she didn't. Okay, pero si lo quisiera hacer como en pregunta, si quiera, esa es la respuesta. ¿Qué tendría que preguntar yo para llegar a esta respuesta? Usando yes or no question. Uh, uh, did she dance in the last part? Dance like this or dance? Dance. Only like this? Yes, only dance. Oh, only. Perfect, excellent. Did she dance in the last party? Okay, the, the compliment in the last party. Excellent, only like that. This one is a yes or no question. And commonly, yes or no question, that's why it's named. We only respond with yes, I did, or no, I did not, or I, or I didn't, okay? We are going to see the the auxiliary didn't, okay? Yes, she did, or no. She did not, or didn't, okay, didn't. Guys, at this point, do you have questions about something? You can ask anything. Don't worry, ask me. Do you have questions? No, this is clear, teacher. Okay. No. Oh, so, also we have the negative form. Okay, in the negative form, we almost have the same um, structure. We have as the subject plus did not or didn't. Okay? Y como siempre les menciono, chicos, como ya tenemos el auxiliar que nos indica que la oración eh, está en... En pasado, ya no necesito utilizar el verbo también en pasado. Eso es para los negativos. ¿Ok? The verb in base form plus a complement. For example, I did not study for this exam. ¿Ok? I'm saying that in the past, I did not study for the exam. So maybe I will have like an three or four in the exam because I didn't study. ¿Ok? No lo hice, pues. No estudié, pues voy a salir mal. I did not study for this exam. Okay, when an action that I didn't, that an action that didn't happen in the past. Okay, and yes, we have more examples. Maybe, let's see. Um, he ate. Pupusas last night. Nicolás. Yes, Make this question, this sentence in negative form. Uh, she didn't. Excellent. Eat. She, sorry. She didn't eat pupusas last night. Excellent. Eat pupusas. That's nice. Very good job, okay? 
Por eso les digo, Checo, es muy importante siempre recordar eso. Como ya tenemos el auxiliar, ya no necesitamos utilizar eh, el, el verbo también. And, for example, David Garay. Wash, no. She did the dishes. This is going to be a little difficult, maybe. But I want, this is to hacerlo fuerte, chicos. Así que, she did the dishes. Okay. David Garay, can you do this one in past, in negative form, please? She didn't the ditches. Mm, are you sure? She didn't. She didn't wash the ditches. Okay, but if I'm saying I'm bad, maybe we are gonna change the the homework. Okay. Now, like this, try to. To, to do it in, in negative form? She didn't do the yeah. homework. Excellent. Good job. Okay. ¿Por qué? Porque pues esta oración está en positivo. Entonces aquí este no está funcionando como auxiliar. Simplemente es un verbo en pasado. Okay. Porque es una oración en positivo. Eso estaba claro aquí en este punto. Pero ahora si la quiero convertir en si la quiero convertir en pasado negativo, entonces tengo que utilizar el auxiliar que es didn't or did not y el verbo. Pero el verbo es did, está en pasado, entonces tengo que pasarlo al presente. El presente de did es do. So, she didn't do the homework. She, ella no hizo la tarea. She didn't do the homework. Okay? In the case with the dishes is she didn't do the dishes or she did not do the dishes, okay? The subject plus the auxiliary plus the verb plus the complement. Guys, do you have questions about this? No, teacher. No. No, okay, perfect. So... Um, Give me a second. Quiero ver porque no alcancé a terminar con el con el tema. Me faltó used to and I had a, a, a game to play. It. But let me see. No, yes, I need to give you guys. Today we are going we are not gonna play nothing so anything so just let me share you the last um the last um the last topic okay we have used to okay used to esto la mejor explicación ay lo siento que, que se las den en español pero la mejor explicación la verdad que es en español okay Used to is the same to say acostumbraba a ser o solía ser. Okay, for example, I used to listen Shakira. Maybe it was when I was five years old. Maybe it was when I was um, 18 years old. I don't know. But it was in the past. Okay, solía, solía escucharla. Today, maybe not too much, but in the past, yes, I used to listen Shakira. Also, he used, he used to dance every weekend. Okay, he used to dance every weekend. Él solía bailar todas las, todos los fines de semana. She used to eat burgers every Saturday. Ella solía comer hamburguesas todos los sábados. They used to use a computer to study. Ellos solían usar, o ellos estaban acostumbrados a usar una computadora para estudiar. Okay, what is the structure? We have the subject plus used to, and in this case, we are gonna use used to like an auxiliary. So, because this auxiliary is in simple past, 
the verb is not necessary to be in simple past. The verb needs to be in present, in base form, okay? Plus a complement. Y como pueden ver, chicos, tenemos I used to listen Shakira. Used to ya me indica que es una, una cosa que sol, solía suceder en el pasado. Entonces solo le agrego mi verbo en, en, en simple present. Ok. Very, 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 very simple. Do you have questions about this? Chicos? No, teacher. No, by the no. moment, no. Ok. So, for tomorrow, for tomorrow's class, I want that, that is going to be our first activity for tomorrow because I want that you, you know how to use use to. So, I want, guys, that you tomorrow, um, it's going to be like a homework. Um, work, work for, tell me about the games you use to play when you were a child, okay? Como los otros chicos no, no asistieron, bueno, a menos que vean la clase grabada, van a poder entrarse a la tarea. Pero porque igual, o sea, tampoco es como una tarea, tarea. Pero por lo menos ustedes, chicos, Joram, Albino, David y Nicolás, de ustedes, y mañana están en la clase, espero de que con ustedes voy a iniciar y que me den, que me digan qué juegos solían jugar cuando estaban niños, ¿ok? Y ya con eso le, le puede hacer un recordatorio a las personas que no estuvieron en la clase, ¿ok? Okay, teacher. Okay, okay, teacher. So, okay. um, I see you tomorrow. Thank you for being in the class and pay attention. Yeah.